That opened up something called a COCOT, which is a customer-owned coin-operated telephone. And uh, that's what you see right in front of you. This is a uh, Protel payphone, I believe. Um, it has a coin slot on the right, which is common with COCOTs, although I believe some uh, phones branded with Verizon use them. Um, this is modeled off of a uh, Western Electric model. And um, I'm going to show you some of the innards of it today. Um, a lot of people know what a payphone looks like, but they might not know what the inside looks like. And um, before I get started here, I mean, um, it's your standard payphone. This one came out of a uh, high school in uh, Upper Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Um, so if you went to high school in Mechanicsburg, you might have used this before. And um, so the front part actually comes off um, right here. There's a spot where you need a T key to open it. The T key is a special type of telephone key. It's in the shape of a T. And uh, I didn't have one. This one it came already open. I actually have another payphone, which uh, is locked right now and needs a T key. So I'm going to order one of those soon. And uh, down here, this is where another lock would go. I believe it's called like a Medeco lock. And um, this one came already open. So I didn't need the lock. The other one, I actually drilled out the lock, and hopefully, if I get the T key, it'll open. So um, basically, the payphone with both parts weighs about I don't know, maybe 60 pounds. Um, your front part is just you know the front face handset is connected to it. So you have your coin slot, your coin release. Get your buttons down here. And then here in the back, um, the phone, the handset is actually tethered in here using a thing of steel. And um, the handset on this, actually, I don't think it works. The, uh, the receiver part, I can't hear anything if I plug in another phone to the line. I can hear if I, if I talk into it using another phone, but if I talk into the other phone, I can't hear anything through this one. So I'm working on getting a replacement for that. So, I mean, back here, this connects into the main phone, which I'll be showing you in a minute. And, uh, we just go through here. You have this, uh, interesting sort of little circuit board here. And that's where you connect in the handset. This probably also interfaces with the uh, buttons out front. And so you can figure out, you know, if the phone's off the hook, stuff like that. Um, going over here again, this is where the handset comes in. Then down below, we really don't have anything. Up top, we really don't have anything except, I believe, the uh, coin release latch. And moving this to the side. We have our main phone here, and um, up here, right here, this is the whole you know coin assembly that holds the coins, takes your coins. Um, then this board here on the left, as you can see, it says Protel. This is what I believe to be a Cocot board. So, um, if you're wondering what's the difference between a Cocot and you know a standard phone, internal-wise. Um, your standard telephone company owned phone would have nothing inside, no sort of board that would regulate the coins. That would be all done, you know, back at the switching center or something over the line. Now with customer owned phones, they needed their own little board because they weren't relying on the telephone company for the charge and stuff. They had to set prices and stuff through their own, you know, little thing. And apparently you could even call into these boards or something and reset them and uh, some of them have little like LCD or LED screens. This one's an older one and I don't even know if it works or not. I don't know if it has any programming. Some of them, like you have to, for if you're buying like a refurbished board and you have to program them. I don't know if this one was wiped or if this one has programming. I don't know what's the deal with it. When I got it, nothing was plugged in or anything it was basically in pieces. And um, 
So at the top here, this little port, this connects to the upper housing, which I showed that little uh, cable before. And then you have some programming buttons. I don't know what this does. I'm not a phone expert here. You have your trigger switch, which is for the coins, I believe. Your battery. These things have batteries in them. And the date on here is 1997, so this is pretty old. And then a uh, telephone line connects to the telephone line. I'll show you some of that later. There's ground. There's, there's a bunch of stuff here. There's even stuff that doesn't even look like it's plugged in. I'm not sure where it goes. But down here, this is where you have this this part on the right plugs in to the ProTel board. And then on the left, over here, that's what plugs into the wall. So this is basically where all your circuits are connected from. Now, um, over here, this thing that says warning, do not push, that's actually, I believe, the coin return mechanism. Because I had a friend that just like hit it back and then a dime popped out. I didn't even know it was in there. So, because if you hit that, that's your coin return. And then, going back over here, this is your whole coin mechanism. This is also from 1997. And, uh, so that sorts between your nickels, dimes, quarters, everything. Um, on the lower part down here, this, uh, big block thing on the left here is where your coins are stored. And, you know, you need a key to get in there. I believe it's the same T key as the side, so... Who knows about that? And then your standard coin return slot right there on the right. And now I'm gonna rotate the housing for you a little bit. So you have another key slot right here, which I believe is also for the coin return. And then you have your back here. This would normally screw into a wall or a booth or something. So I don't believe that they would just set these down places. And then you need some sort of cord to come out the back so you could, you know, hook it up to a telephone line. I added this one in to test it. Then, you know, the side again, it's all smooth. And then if you want to connect, you know, the upper housing back, then you just Connect that up right there. And pick this up. And slide it right in. And then you're good. Alright, and that is a Koka telephone. If I ever get this one or the other one working properly, I might show how you can put this up in your own house or something, use it as a standard phone. I mean, it's probably not going to work perfectly, but if anything, it'll look pretty cool. It'll have some sort of nostalgic feel to it, so hopefully I can get that going for you. And uh, that's it for this segment. hope you guys liked that segment. Uh, hopefully I can get some of the keys and stuff I need so that I can do uh, replacements and trying to get my payphone and the other one operational. And uh, of course I'll do a segment on that if I get the stuff that I need. And um, right now I'm going to try to do something new which is a review. Now, you might ask what I'm going to review. Um, I think right now I'm going to start trying to do like books or movies. But I mean like not every day, you know, your standard movies, maybe like hacker documentaries or some IPTV show DVDs, stuff like that. Stuff that, you know, maybe a normal person you'd go and download it, but you wouldn't actually see what comes with it or stuff like that. And um, it might be something current, like it might be like a pure ownage DVD set, but it could also be something old. Like I have a lot of really weird, kind of bizarre hacker books from the 80s and the 90s that I've read through, and some of those might make pretty good reviews. But uh, today I'm going to show Rice Tea, which is made by Julian McArdle. And um, this actually started back a while ago, maybe five years or so on uh, the Bindrev forums where he was planning on doing a movie called Hackers which was spelled lead speak to differentiate it between you know the 1995 classic we all love but um, for those who don't know Julian McArdle if you're into IPTV at all he did the Ento show which is basically just a one-time show that taught about computers and computer safety and stuff sort of like an instructional video you could show to a group of students or something 
and um, he also did the On Piracy documentary, which is a pretty cool documentary on piracy. You don't usually see this angle that he was trying to show. And um, so going back to the book, it started out as a movie, and uh, he'd been filming another movie, I believe it was Docs at the time, and he was kind of low on budget. He's also going to school, so he didn't have the necessary funds to complete this movie. So what he did was uh, he changed the name to Rice Tea, and he released it as a book. Now, um, I actually found this book by just Googling myself, and um, he put me in the, I believe it's the special thanks section, and um, which I didn't even know I was there, just from you know communicating with him on the forums about the movie. And I thought that was pretty cool. And um, he releases the book free as a PDF download. But I went and I got the physical copy, which is published independently by Lulu. And um, I think it's somewhere between like $15 and $20. It's a pretty good price. And uh, the book itself is about 200 pages. And it's a great book if you're like just getting started in the hacker community or you're interested in the hacker community or if you have a friend that's interested in the hacker community and about what hackers really do. Um, as you can probably tell by the original name, Hackers, this book is kind of based off of Hackers in a way. I'm not going to try to give away too much, but um, there's a group of friends who stumble onto a botnet and um, they're trying to bring it down and not get pinned with it themselves. And it, it borrows a lot from the movie Hackers. There's some lines in there which you can tell are just like he watched the movie and he put that in there like directly and there's a lot of scenes that correspond and it's a really cool read um, and if you're worried like what if I don't get the technical aspects of it he breaks everything down really well and anybody who's new to even computers can understand this book but anybody who's like a seasoned computer user they will also get some enjoyment out of this book. It's, it's really cool. And um, that is Rice Tea by Julian McArdle. And what's actually cool is he is now turning it into a movie again, and it's called uh, Botnet. And I believe he finished up filming a little while ago, so hopefully we can see the movie soon. All right, and that's my review for this episode. So I advise that you check that out. If anything, you know, download the PDF version, give it a quick skim through. But really, I think it's great, and if anything, it probably deserves you know you to go out and purchase it if you really like it and um, now switching gears over